not to get ahead of ourselves, but our next uh, big project is our annual Tricks and Treats, and this year is going to be a drive-by Treats and Truth giveaway. I'm trusting the Lord. I believe even though we're uh, people are just going to be driving by, we may not be able to see all of their costumes and their dress up and have as much fun with the kids. We're certainly not going to be able to show them magic tricks or feed, feed them any of Ray's stew, but I believe that more people are going to drive by than ever before. And we're just going to give them a sack full of candy and scriptures and our goodwill. So come and be a part of that if you want to. We still have to build those bags and get ready. We're going to do that. I don't even know what can think what to uh, but not Halloween is on this year. Seems like it was on Wednesday last year. But anyway, somebody's looking it up on their phone. It's Saturday. Saturday night? Saturday. It's Halloween. All right. The reason Andy's not here, he's well, but uh, he is, he's under quarantine. He's under a 10-day quarantine. He's not sick. He has not tested positive for COVID-19, but someone in his work team did. And so that's what... Everybody's trying to be very careful. So he's on a self-imposed uh, quarantine. He can't be here, but we could not have been able to be successful in this without him. He is watching this morning from home or from wherever he's at. <laughs> wherever he's on a desert island somewhere <laughs> with Ginger, Marianne, and Gilligan, and the professor, and the Howells. <clears throat> yes, watching gun smoke as well. So thanks to Andy, but pray for him. Uh, like I said, he's, he's not symptomatic and he feels fine, but uh, any of us, and we'll, we may have to readjust. If we, if we ever find out that one of us is positive, then we'll have to close services down for a quarantine time. So we're on the ball. We're watching things. We're staying careful. Make sure when you get here, sanitize your hands when you leave. Sanitize your hands. We'll hose you down if you need to. Wear your mask when you feel like you're going to be close enough to eat people to, bleep, to breathe on. I said, can he take his mask off in the pulpit? I said, well, I'm, it's hard of hearing as I'm getting. I, I need to be able to read your lips, so please do that. Larry, come up here and take over. We're always so excited. Who's, tell us who your guest is again. I don't want to take presumption. My wife. The guy. missus. The <laughs> missus. The boss. The boss. All right. Come on, man. You know, I'm thinking about that. I'm going to turn you loose, but you need to behave, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. What an honor and a blessing to be here this morning. Uh, Andy, John, all of you, for allowing me to come <clears throat> this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. If I can stand before God's children, I'm honored and I'm blessed. And I need to make the best of it for our Lord and Savior. Amen. So, what an honor. What an honor, Pastor. What an honor, Andy. Thank each and one of you for allowing me to be here this morning to stand before you. And a big goal is the shoeboxes. And I'm sitting there this morning on the porch. I, I, I don't know how, I, I don't know the right words. Y'all are just so awesome in the shoebox ministry. I'm serious now. Y'all do it. You get, a, you get an A plus for shoeboxes, okay? If I'm, if I'm giving you a, a grade, y'all do A pluses. Not only for the number, but how well they are. They're quality shoeboxes, okay? And so, y'all, and y'all just persistent. You just keep doing it. You just keep doing it. You just keep, y'all just awesome. And, and, uh, what, and, and, you, and you even let me come back and talk to y'all each year. So, uh, uh, glory to God. He can do miracles when, when I, when I get to come and speak to y'all. And, and, uh, on, on the health issue, I was going to say, uh, I did have a, a, a doctor's report this week. Well, my cancer doctor, my kidney cancer doctor, and, and, and last year when I when I went to him about this time, he said, "I'll see you in a year." And I said, "Oh my goodness, what a blessing!" Because it was every six months. 
Well, look here. This year he said, I'll see you in two years. Amen. You know, I wanted to get up and turn cartwheels. I know that would have been a sight, but anyway, praise the Lord. So uh, God's not done with us. We're still here, amen? we got work to do. we got shoe boxes to make. We, got, we want to tell people about Jesus Christ, amen? And what an honor and blessing to be here. I have not been back to Honduras this year. I was supposed to win in June. I was supposed to go next month. Neither one of those uh, ain't going to happen and didn't going to happen or have you said. We're not going to Honduras this year. Uh, it's, it's, they got COVID too. So I'm, I, I miss Honduras. I want to go back. So I can't say that I've been back to check on any of these uh, pictures. Uh, I recognize many of some of the places, some of the people. And beautiful pictures, and, and what a blessing. And look at here, you're persistent. You just keep on keeping on. So guess what? We're fixed to send some more down there. Last year was, was record. Uh, my team, God's team, which is part of y'all, was 2,188 shoe boxes. That's a, that's a record. And on the container, we sent over 7,000 shoe boxes to Honduras. So last year was awesome. This year, it's not going to be that much. Well, who knows what God's got in store? Amen. I know. I know. I feel like I'm not going to live 2,188 shoe boxes. But I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm. 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 I'm, I'm wide open and, and I'm, I'm excited. And uh, here's y'all's 200. So praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, uh, we did go last October. Uh, I think I was here just a few weeks before I left last October to go to Honduras. Uh, we done some great, probably the best trip I've ever had. We took 17 pastors and their wives, brought them to the motel and put them up in the motel where we stayed. It's a pretty nice motel for two nights and three days. We felt it didn't cost them a dime. We wanted just a husband and a wife to kind of give that pastor a uh, just a little vacation or, or get away. They had their own personal room. We fed them. We took care of them. Uh, we gave each pastor a brand new Spanish leather bound Bible with their name on it. Every one of the women, uh, Nana, my, my court my, uh, uh, interpreter down there, she took every one of the pastor's wives and carried them to this saloon. That was a salon, wasn't <laughs> To a hairdo job. They got fingernail jobs, they got toenail jobs, and they got the hair done. And so, awesome. And we worked at the girls' dorm. Great trip last year. Hey, listen, uh, I want to share with you this morning. Uh, if you got any questions before I, 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 in my word, before I get started, uh, here's what God put on my heart. And He changed it this morning. Pastor, you know why He does that? Why, why He does that? I don't know why He does that. And, and, and I, I ain't good at this now. I'm not a pastor. I'm just a loud mouth redneck, okay? But look here. I, I want to share something with you. I, I want to share this. This morning I'm watching Gardendale First Baptist Church. I don't know if y'all ever watched that with Steve Gaines. Not Steve Gaines. Um, Kevin Hale. Kevin Hale. But anyway, he shared this morning a story about how important you are. How important you are. Now look at here. Did you, did you give a dollar? Did you put a jump rope in here? Did you, uh, uh, did you help package him? Let me say something to them. Whatever you did is important. Because listen to this. This is a Vietnam story. This is a Vietnam story. Uh, 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 a native pilot by the name of Charlie Plum. There are many, many, many uh, flights in Vietnam in his life when he got shot down. And he ejected from his jet and parachuted to the ground, only to spend six years in prison over there. Come home, has a great ministry. One day was sitting at a restaurant, and another guy sitting close to him, come up to him, says, are, are you Charlie Plum? He says, yes, I am. He says, I know about you. 
I knew you flew many flights off the U.S. Kitty Hawk. I knew you got shot down. I'm the one that packed your parachute. And Charlie Poe says, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. He says, you know, back then, he says, I was, a, I was an officer, Navy jet pilot. And he said, I could just imagine that guy in his sailor outfit. I probably never spoke to him. But he's the one that packed my parachute. That little girl, is going to get that shoebox right there. As your pastor says, and Andy says, it took a lot to get this shoebox right here. If you did anything to help this shoebox right here, you're just as important as anybody else. There'll be a pastor. There'll be a pastor in Honduras. There'll be a pastor in Honduras that will pass these shoeboxes out. One of these, right there's a pastor. He was one of the 17 that was at our church, at our thing this past October. <clears throat> They'll look up to him. But if I told you last year, <clears throat> the year before when we were down there, when it was Nicaragua, which is a little city, which is in Honduras. It's not the country of Nicaragua. <clears throat> we were there and we was walking through the streets this little community and we were sharing Jesus Christ led three ladies to the Lord and I say we did our coordinator did for speaking Spanish but one of the questions them three ladies asked him about us is that them people that sends them she boxes down here to us and he says yes they are it takes a lot of people to put these together. If you've done anything to the kingdom, you're just as important as anybody. Amen? Amen. James, if you want to share with me, I'm going to share in chapter, James chapter 1, verse 2. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into adverse temptation. Look at here. We in temptation, are we not? We in trials. Hey, look at here. We was in that situation before the COVID, amen? But I'm going to tell you what, the COVID has piled it on. The protesters has piled it on. Politics has piled it on. And guess what still exists? Cancer. Divorces. Job losses. We're in the first temptation. God said, can it joy, my brother, when we fall into them? I spoke one time at our church this year already during this pandemic, and I said, look at here. We're in a pandemic. Why should we let something as great and as terrible and awesome as a pandemic is? Why should we waste something like that? Let's use it to grow closer to the Lord. Amen. Use this pandemic to sharpen our sower. Woo, blow it. To get us more excited and cranked for the Lord. Let's don't. Hey, look, I'm going to tell you, March of this year, I can remember March of this year. I was sitting on my front porch sitting when I sat on this morning. I sat there with a mully grudge. Couldn't go nowhere. Didn't want to. You know, you're scared. And how scared do you get? I didn't know what to do. I just sat there. And God shared with me. You just going to sit there and die with it. Get dizzy. I'll give you work to do. Make something out of this. Don't let this pandemic kill you. Use this pandemic to sharpen your shoulder, shoulder, to make your light brighter for the kingdom. Amen. Use it. Let's, let's, let's take these trials. <coughs> <Excuse me. coughs> let's take these trials and these tribulations and let's grow for the Lord. Let's let our light shine brighter. Amen. That's what he's saying. 
dead, right? This is Jesus' half brother. Share that with us. Drop down to verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when, he, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Look at here. <clears throat> Y'all look, look at that first sentence in, in verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. You know what I see there? I see Walnut Grove Baptist Church. Blessed is the man that endureth. Y'all endure Right through the trials and tribulations of this time right now, right through the pandemic, your shoe boxes are ready right here for Bucket to come get them. You're endured. Bless you. Hey, God's going to bless you. Amen. He is blessing you. That's what he's talking about. Look at that. God's name is in the Bible. Blessing is Walnut Grove Baptist Church because they endured the temptations. You can set up. Well, we can't do shoe boxes this year. We just can't do them this year. You can't do that trick. What is that? Uh, what's that thing you was talking about? What are you going to give out candy for Halloween? Trump or tree. Trump tree? You can't do it like you did last year. We can't do shoe boxes just exactly like we did last year. But look at here. You, God will give you a way. He'll give you a way to endure these temptations to do His work. Amen? Yeah, it's different. It's different. Look at verse uh, 19. Wherefore, my beloved brother, let everyone be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to read. Listen, this, this, there's Bucket in there. Did y'all know that he's talking about Bucket? In that verse, right? That's Bucket. <clears throat> in my retired life, <clears throat> excuse me, guess what? I sat at the store a lot in the mornings eating the biscuit. With my boot, later boots are real high because there's a lot of stuff going on up there talking. Boy, you know what I'm talking about? I know none of y'all retired people do. But I'm going to tell you, we got a store down there in Crane Hill, Alabama, and you need to wear boots when you go down there because I'm going to tell you, there's some serious problems solved there. Do you know there's some people there that don't vote like I want to vote? And that I would like to take them out back with a stick and wear them out. So that they would vote like I want them to vote. And that ain't the only thing that they don't do right in my book. Because we hear all this stuff. A guy got stopped the other day. That state trooper pulled me over. I was doing 55 and a 45. I gave him a good sawmill. But I said to myself, I said, you're doing 55 and a 45. What's wrong? He's supposed to give you a ticket. You got a right to complain. But when I'm real <clears throat> fast to hear and real fast to talk, I run my big mouth when I should keep quiet. You know about two years ago I was up there at the store. Politics got heavy that morning. Before that time was over with, I had to apologize about that too. He still didn't vote like I wanted him to. But I had to, I had to, I had to apologize to him. Because I spoke when I could have kept my mouth shut. Now let me ask you this. You, hear, you look at verse 19 again. You know, read it again. My brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. If I'm going to make an impression, and I wanted to come and make an impression on y'all today, because God gave me this opportunity to stand before y'all this morning. Hey, this ain't just accident. This is divine. This is a God thing. Hey, look, I don't know about you. I'm walking on water today. I'm walking on water. 
This is a divine appointment for me to stand before you here this morning. So I need to make the best of it. I want to make a difference for my kingdom. I want to make a difference. So if I can make a difference, and I said, Lord, this one, I said, I, I, let me keep my eyes on you, Lord. Let me keep my eyes on you. Let, let me speak for you today at Walnut Grove. My Walnut Grove. Mine's going to. <laughs> That's all right. She still puts up with me. So I want God to use me today. And if God can use me today from Him to you, then maybe I can give you some encouragement. Maybe, maybe God can, no, maybe God can give you some encouragement through me. Maybe God can say, thank you, Walnut Grove, for this blessing. Thank you for this blessing. Keep enduring. Don't stop. God's got work for us to do. When He gets done with us, He'll call us home. Amen. He called a good one home from our church this week. Hawkeye. <coughs> Melvin Hawkins. Down there. In my Sunday school class. Going home. Look at the last verse in chapter 1. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. From the world. Keep them unspotted, keep them unspotted from the world. Look here. Help the fatherless. Visit the fatherless. Help them. Help the widows. That don't say anything about giving shoe boxes to the children of Honduras. But it's the same thing, is it not? Amen. It's not saying along the same lines what you're doing right here with these shoe boxes. What part you did, what you may say, well, I just done that. Well, you've done great. You've done part of it. Well, I've done a lot of it. That's awesome. Everything is important. You're important. Every one of you are important in the kingdom of God. Every one of you are ministers to some degree. You may not be the one that gets up here and brings the message or sings the beautiful music. You may not be the piano player, but you're part of a ministry that God's called you to do, to be a part of. And all I can see is awesome work that you're doing. Awesome work. That's why the Lord's got me here this morning. To tell you thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the children of Honduras. Thank you on behalf of the children of Honduras. But it ain't for me. You're doing it for those children. And for what God's called you to do. Amen? Amen. That's what you've done. That's what, God, that's what you've allowed God to do in your life. To make a mark. Make a difference. And I'm going to tell you. This will do a lot better making this shoe box and taking somebody out back and trying to chew them out or beat them with a stick. You know what I mean? This will make a difference. God's, God's stuff makes a difference. Amen? Amen? God's Word makes a difference. Not Bucket's Word. I told you I had to apologize to that guy about two years ago for what I said because I mouthed off. Boy, I told him. I told him good. And then Jesus got a hold of me. <laughs> Boy, he cheated me out. And I knew immediately I had to do something about it. Amen. I had to do something about it. Listen, I love y'all. Y'all are such a blessing. And as the one of the verses said, blessed is those who endure and you continue to endure and look what you've done what you've done. You, you need to slow down. You just keep doing it. I know you continue to do that. I know you continue to do God's work <clears throat> with whatever mission field, whatever you do. So God bless you. And let's pray for these now, Pastor. How, how is, uh, uh, I don't guess, I normally pass them out, but let's not do that. Uh, you tell me what to do. Let's just, 
Uh, I'm going to ask Chief Pastor if you would. Is that all right? I will dedicate them. We'll pray over them. I'm going to give you, this is uh, our postage. Okay. You can never take that from us. Let's all stand up this morning. Uh, this will be our invitation, our dedication. We're, but uh, I want us to dedicate these to the Lord. And yes. Every single one of them has the potential of having a story. Yeah. And I don't know what all we're going to do in heaven, but I'd like to watch that show. Yeah. Tune into that channel and say, Lord, show me what you did with that box, that one single box, and how many lives you touched. Listen, if you ever get into a situation in your theology where you feel like God can't get it done without you being up front, running your mouth, and, and waving your hands, that somehow or another you've got to be on the spot or you've got to be the spokesperson, you've got to be the one that's face-to-face, uh, -face, person to person, or God's not going to be able to get it done. I have found out that God can do a lot of things if it doesn't matter who gets the credit or who the spotlight shines on. If you will begin to develop and feel like, if you've ever thought in your life that you've got to be present, that you've got to be there, you've got to be, it's got to be personal, it's got to be person to person, face to face. We may never meet these people. We may be in some cafe up in uh, heaven someday and we'll be able to walk over to somebody and say, come on, pack that box. Pack that box. Oh, hallelujah. Danny Bang, would you dedicate these boxes to the Lord Jesus today? Let's pray that maybe perhaps he'll let us one day hear the story behind each and every one. Father, we do thank you for these yes. boxes. We thank yes. you for this ministry and for this man who directs the ministry. Lord, we know, God, that he lays out all that he has for you. And we pray, God, that you continue to bless his life. And thank you for the blessing that you've given. But, Lord, we want to bless each and every one of these boxes. Yes, yes. We don't know who will come yes. in contact with these boxes. But, Lord, we know that you touch makes a difference, whatever it may be, whatever the intentions might be, God, whoever may get it, whatever they may find, Lord, we know that your blessing goes with it, and Lord, we want to dedicate them to you and give you the glory and the praise for it, and Lord, all that we do, we do through your power. Yes. And Lord, we do it for you and to honor you, we pray, God, that you go with these boxes. Keep them safe, Lord, keep them as they go, Lord, that each one will reach the intended person, Lord, that you have already laid out that's waiting on the spot. And a lot of Lord, when they open it up, it might be a blessing in their lives and in the lives of those around them. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be a part of something that you are doing. Lord, continue to help us to watch for what you want us to do. And do that, Lord, rather than coming up with our own ideas, Lord. Help us to always follow your guidance and, and be appreciative, Lord, of the opportunity to be a part of the blessing. Someone else. Amen. Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. 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 Lord, hallelujah. Thank you for coming, Mrs. Buck. <laughs> thank you all. God bless you all. <laughs> These are going with Bucket today, so thank you again all so much. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, before we go, I talked with uh, Mackie Watts yesterday. Mackie Watts? They, uh, they diagnosed his mother, Joanne.